Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by welcoming all of you to this 2013 European Minerals Day event. I'm sorry, I cannot be with you in person. Raw materials are the lifeblood of European Union industry. At least 30 million jobs in the European Union depends on access and on availability of raw materials. But as I'm sure you know, Europe imports most of its raw materials. And this makes our industry very dependent on international markets to secure the raw materials it requires. As global consumption increases rapidly, these markets have become a place of fierce competition involving both the developed countries and the fast-growing emerging economies. These trends are clearly undermining our competitiveness. Our capacity to simply extract more virgin resources in Europe is very limited. What we can do is promote a more resource-efficient and effective use of the raw materials we already have and, where possible, recycle and reuse. This is why the European Commission has placed resource efficiency at the centre of its economic strategy, because it is crucial for Europe's future competitiveness. It can bring answers both in the short term by cutting costs for business and in the long term by responding strategically to rising resource prices and risks of supply shocks. By providing the framework conditions for resource efficiency, we can reduce our import dependency, create new business opportunities, make Europe an attractive place for industrial investment and bring European companies to the forefront in innovation. And at the same time, we address negative environmental and social impacts associated with raw material extraction and production. Resource productivity alone, getting more economic value from the same or fewer resources, will not be enough. We need to learn to use the same resources again and again. If materials are so valuable, why do we so often bury them or burn them when the product they were used in has finished its useful life? Materials should have several lives. They should be pumped back into the economy. That means creating closed loop systems. It means designing for recyclability, repair and reuse. It means developing industrial symbiosis. It means also new business models, for example, using peer-to-peer -peer leasing, better markets for secondary raw materials and sustainable sourcing. It means circular economy. We should seek inspiration from the way the nature works to drive a system change in our economies and societies. After all, nature has had millions of years of experience and adaptation to perfect a system which is obviously circular. Throughout its evolution and diversification, our industrial economy has scarcely moved beyond the fundamental characteristics established in the early days of industrialization, intensive resource use for production and a linear model of take, make, use, throw away, a dead end for our resources. Today in Europe we use 16 tons of materials per person per year. We throw away six tons and half of that waste is then landfilled. We need to change this. To do so, we need to develop stewardship and sustainable sourcing for both renewable and non-renewable materials. Environmental legislation has an important role to play in improving our resource efficiency and our material efficiency. Our waste legislation has already driven the beginning of a revolution in European waste management. Today, we are composting and recycling more than ever, and landfill is progressively falling, even if the story significantly varies from country to country. And that revolution is creating jobs. Between 2000 and 2008, the waste sector alone grew more than 20%. Jobs in recycling grew by almost 80%. We estimate that full implementation of European Union waste legislation would alone generate 400,000 jobs. Our ambition is to accelerate that move up the waste hierarchy. In the Resource Efficiency Roadmap and the seventh Environmental Action Programme, we set our clear objectives to be achieved by 2020. We are now translating this into more specific waste targets through a review of key targets in EU waste legislation in 2014, year in which I would like to focus on circular economy. I would strongly encourage you 
to participate in the consultation process to prepare this review before the summer. Setting targets in waste legislation is important, but we need to look at the whole economics of the life cycle of the products we produce and consume. This is why the Commission is also working through other instruments. For example, we are using the Eco-Design Directive to ensure that products are designed to be dismantled and recycled. We are encouraging companies to measure and improve the life cycle performance of their products in order to build a single market for green products. We are using economic instruments to promote resource efficiency so that we get the price of resources right, taking into account the true cost of their use and their economic environmental impacts. We are expanding and clarifying the concept of producer responsibility. We are developing further end of waste criteria in order to boost confidence in recycled materials. And we are encouraging industrial symbiosis systems to facilitate trading in byproduct and waste. Ladies and gentlemen, waste is far too valuable to just throw away. And that is no way saying that there will be less jobs in the mineral sector. I'm not afraid for the future of the sector, but I'm afraid for the future of all of us if we will ignore the trends of growing population and growing per capita consumption. We need to change the way we produce and consume. I wish you a successful discussion and look forward to hearing the outcomes of the European Minerals Day.